Zulkar Nain and the second car, and therefore we're talking about the end of Gog and Magog. Because Zulkar Nain and the first car took us to Gog and Magog and he built the barrier. And after he built the barrier, these were his words. This is Surah al -Kaf. This barrier which we have built represents kindness and mercy from Allah to mankind. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي But when that time comes, I wish my Rabb has worn. My Rabb means my Lord God. جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ He is going to bring down this barrier. وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّ And then the warning of my Lord will come to pass. Meaning, Gog and Magog will now be reached. That's the first karm. That's the first karm. So in the first karm, what he did was he blocked Gog and Magog. So when the second karm comes, he'll have to block them one more time. One more time. When the first karm took place and Gog and Magog were released, We know that they're going to travel from the north, going down south, from the area of the Caucasus Mountains, going down south. Excuse me. And so now I want to give my first comment, that when the second karm is to come, this is the most important geographical region of the world. International relations are located here. Not Washington, <laughs> not London, not Paris, not, um, not Chicago, <laughs> not New York. Modern Western civilization would have gone. What remains of modern Western civilization when the second current takes place is nothing but a small player on the chessboard of the world on the state of the world. But modern, modern Western civilization as a significant actor in international affairs would have disappeared, checkmated. That's my first comment. So we're no longer concerned with Washington and London and, <laughs> and Paris in the second country. We are now concerned with this geographical location of the world. This is the center of the world. The region from the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea, going down south to Jerusalem. This triangle is the most important region of the world in the second car. This is my first comment. Now then, what is the destiny of Gog and Magog? when the second current takes place. Is there any verse of the Quran which gives us any, any insight, any knowledge about the destiny of Gog and Magog? We, before we go to the Hadith, uh, my students will have pencil and paper, pen and paper, and they'll take notes. The rest will simply be listening. I want to take you now, this is the methodology of bringing all the verses of the Quran together in a harmonious soul. I want to take you to the surah which I recited this morning as my choice. <laughs> yes, alhamdulillah for that. Surah Al-A'raf. And uh, we must go to, I think it's around 166, somewhere around there. And uh, uh, it is uh, about a Korea which is located by the sea. وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْمَحْرِ And ask them about the town which is located by the sea. And I wrote this book, Constantinople in the Quran. Go to my website and you can look, download it free of charge. You can also order it. And in this book, we've dealt with that passage of the Quran. It is Constantinople. And here is a town 
which Allah gave to that part of Banu Israel who had accepted the Messiah. The other part which rejected the Messiah, he placed a ban on them, they could never return, and he also broke them it broke them up into bits and pieces and scattered them all over the world. وَقَطْعَنَاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُمَمْ He broke them up into bits and pieces and scattered them all over the world. Those Israelite people, I hope they are listening to me. Because truth is in the Quran. It is for your benefit to study the Quran if you're a Jew. Don't. Be arrogant. Be humble. And come to the Quran. The Quran can teach you if you're a Jew. He cut you up into bits and pieces and he scattered you all over the world. That's what he says in the Quran, if you didn't know that. That was his punishment to you. Because you rejected the Messiah when he sent the Messiah. You still reject him to this day. That's the definition of a Jew. A Jew is one who rejects Jesus as the Messiah. That's the definition of a Jew. To, if I'm wrong, tell me. But there are those Israelites who accepted him. And Allah allowed them to conquer the city without fighting. They, all that they had to do was to say, La ilaha illallah wa Allahu akbar. And the three sides of the city fell to them without fighting. And they're known as Banu Ishaq because Allah does not want to refer to them as Banu Israel. The term is no longer being used. But when they conquered Constantinople and it became their city, and now they want to establish the holy state of Israel in Constantinople. Every Russian knows this. The holy Byzantine Empire is the holy state of Israel being re-established re in Constantinople. Then the Hadith tells us that Allah released Dajjal amongst them. And uh, Allah tested them. Dajjal got them to abandon the law. You don't have to follow the law anymore. The truth is here, yeah, follow the truth, not the law. The truth is come in the person of Jesus. So you don't have to bother with the law anymore, that rubbish, which many still believe. And the law was that on the Sabbath day, you're not allowed to work. So what Allah did was, this is Surah Al-A'raf, that on the Sabbath day, he'd send all the fish. And every other day of the way, no fish. And Dajjal got them to say, we don't care two peanuts for the law. And they went fishing. They went fishing. And then Allah cursed them. That part of the Israelite world who had become Christian and who had gone to Constantinople, Allah cursed them for what they did. Kunu kiradatan khasi'in, be apes, despised. You're going to now live like apes. And that part of the world where you live will be monkey town. People will live like apes. Monkeys don't wear clothes. They're naked. So these people are going to show a preference for naked. Take off the hijab. Take off the clothing. Reveal even the intimate underwear as the skirt goes higher and higher. Hmm? Until eventually... They're going to be completely naked in public. Completely naked in public. That's monkey town. The monkeys have their bedroom life in public. It's not shameful for them. That's their way of life. But for human beings, it's shameful. And yet these people are going to show a preference, eventually, for sexual relations in public. This is monkey town. This is Allah's curse upon them. Immediately after this passage of the Quran, in Surah Al-Araf, what's the next verse? Go check it out. What is ta'azzana rabbuka? What is ta'azzana rabbuka yaba'ah? 
لَيَبْعَثَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ This is the next ayah. This is the next verse. After the passage on Monkey Town. And your Lord God has made this announcement. He now announces that he's going to send against them those who will inflict upon them until Kiyama the worst possible punishment. Who are those that Allah will send who will continue to inflict punishment on these people until Kiyama. You must make your choice on explaining. I know mine's. Mine's is very plain and very clear that this verse is, is, is indicating that Allah will now release Dajjal and he will release Gog and Magog. And this is about the third, the third century after Jesus. If I'm right, that this verse pertains to the release of God and Gog and Magog and of the Jal, then this verse also tells us about the end. May yasumu hum su al azab ila yom al kiyama, ila yom al kiyama, the Jal is going to live until Jesus returns. So the return of Jesus is the most important event in Kiyama. The return of Jesus is the most important event in Kiyama. The last day when the whole world perishes is only the mopping up operation, but this is the most important event in Kiyama. If I'm wrong, kindly correct me. I make mistakes, yes, of course, but one thing, when I make a mistake, you are sure, I, from the time I know, know I made a mistake, I'll rush to correct myself, and I'll mention who is the one who corrected me. I don't borrow knowledge from the Ahmadiyya movement. What a load of rubbish, yes. And so, if, if Dajjal is going to be destroyed, he's going to be killed by Jesus when he returns. The false Messiah will be killed by the true Messiah. It indicates that Gog and Magog are going to be, the, the punishment of Gog and Magog will end at the time when Jesus returns. Both of these two things will end at the same time. So there are two things now involved with the end of Gog and Magog. Number one, the Hadith is when the, when the uh, release, the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee on the way to Jerusalem. How we know it's Jerusalem? Because of the Hadith in Sahih Muslim about the mountain where Jesus will climb, which is located in Beitul Maqdis. That's what Sahih Muslim says, Beitul Maqdis. So they're coming from the north and they're going past the Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem. And by the time the last of them pass, they'll say there used to be water here. So we know, when the barrier is brought down, the first of them will come. But why will the last of them come? Answer, the last of them come because they will be checkmated one more time. Whatever remains of Gog and Magog after that will be behind the barrier, will not be able to emerge again. Will it be a barrier again the second time with blocks of iron? Well, I don't know. I don't know. But I believe it's connected with the Malhama. This is why I'm saying I don't have the scholarship to completely explain this subject. The others will come after me who will be able to take this subject, inshallah, 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 to dazzling heights. And if the knowledge comes to me in my grave, I will smile. And I'll say, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And so, the last of them all will come when Zulkarnain again blocks them in the second coming. 
this is my second coming on the second coming. But what about those who have already been released and are now going down to Jerusalem and who have passed the, 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 um, the Sea of Galilee on their way to Jerusalem? They are still very powerful there. They are wrecking havoc. They are killing those who are on earth and then they say, let's kill those who are in the sky above. So the the Wailulil Arab means shuddering the Kodik Talaba comes to pass. And then Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam speaks to his son, Ya Bunaya, Inni Ana Ara fil Manami Anni Azbahu Fanzur Maza Tara. Oh, my son, I've seen in a vision that I have to sacrifice you. But this is not literal sacrifice. No, the religion of Allah which comes down in Islam does not require, never required at any time human sacrifice. Never, never, never. This is ayah mutashabiha, meaning the destruction of the Arabs because the Arabs are descended from this son, the son of the sacrifice. And uh, this sacrifice of the Arab is what Allah's messenger is talking about when he says, Wailulil Arab, the destruction of the Arabs. Uh, my view is that coronavirus has come from Gog and Magog. And my view is that this is only the first wave. This is the trial run. <laughs> yes. There's more to come on coronavirus. I think it is biological warfare being waged by them. And that biological warfare is intended to culminate with not only a substantial reduction in the population of the world, but vastly more important, the destruction of the Arabs. That the Arabs are going to become few in number because of being destroyed by biological warfare. I said this five months ago, must have been January or February, when the coronavirus was now entering into the world. This is what I said five months ago. I'm asking that that video be put once again on my YouTube channel so you can view what I said five months ago. And so while the second current will block Gog and Magog, as they were blocked the first time, the second current will not eliminate them in the south, they will still be there. And it is when Allah's messenger, Nabi Isa Islam, when he prays to Allah to destroy them, that Allah will destroy them. And I've mentioned that already to you. So now then, what is the second current going to do? How will we know that the second current is taking place? For those who are the people of the two horns, well, let them explain them. Let them give their eschatology, and we we'll read what they have to say. This is ours, because we di dismiss the two horns. We dismiss, therefore, any historical personality as well, Kagne. So this is our eschatology. They have theirs. We have ours. I'm not waging any war on them. No, not at all. I'm not disrespecting them. I'm not preventing them. In fact, I'm inviting them. Come on, produce your scholarship. Let's see what you have to say on Gog and Magog. Hmm? And this is what I have to say. And I have not borrowed anything from the Ahmadiyya movement. That is a load of rubbish. Now then, when the second Karn is to take place, how will we know? My answer is that in the same way that the first current took place, so too the, will the second current take place. My answer is that the first current commenced. The first current means the first time it commenced in the region of the Black Sea. And in that region, Power emerged in the world. Produce. Allah sent that power. Allah gave that power. Blessed power. And that power rests on the foundations of faith. And we who follow Nabi Muhammad, I don't know 
by the, <laughs> the sheep and the cattle. But we who follow Nabi Muhammad we never say we have a monopoly on faith in the world. The Quran says, Minhumul Mu'minun. There are believers amongst them as well. So we never say we have a monopoly on faith. Nobody else has faith. Only we have faith. No, we don't say that. The sheep and cattle can do what they want. I have no apologies to make for anyone. When Allah Himself says in the Quran, Ulaika kal and I'm there just like cattle. But whom adult, they're worse than cattle. I don't say that. I'm only saying they're just like cattle. Allah says they're worse than cattle because they have eyes and they cannot see. They have ears and cannot hear. They have hearts and yet do not understand. This is what we have in the world today. Overwhelming majority of mankind are like that. And what is their destiny? If you have eyes and you cannot see and therefore you go for Salah to Juma with a face mask, <laughs> Allah says, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَعْنَ لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ The destiny is Jahannam. Not only human beings, but the jinn as well who can't see. Jahannam is your destiny. That's what Allah says in Surah al uh, Is it an An'am, perhaps? And so, the first can was at the Black Sea. And the second can will be at the Black Sea. The world will witness power emerging, resting on the foundations of faith. And we who follow Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, we never claim that we have a monopoly on faith in the world. Never. So power is going to emerge in that region of the world, the Black Sea, on the foundations of faith. And I have pointed out to you that Crimea, the peninsula of Crimea, commands strategically the whole of the Black Sea. If you control Crimea, you control the Black Sea, hmm? in the modern age of warfare in particular. When power emerges in the region of the Black Sea, that power is going to be used on the one hand to punish the wicked, punish those who are exploiting and appropriating unjustly the wealth of all of mankind, reducing all of mankind to biting poverty while they're growing richer and richer and richer and richer with an unjust monetary system, using paper to make money, bogus, fraudulent, utterly haram paper money, while prohibiting the use of sunnah money go. Who are doing that? It's modern Western civilization. They are wicked to do that. And Zulkarnain is going to punish them for their wickedness. So they're going to fight. There's going to be a war over that mountain of gold that is there in Surah, in Sahih Bukhari. But uh, the cattle and the sheep wouldn't know what I'm talking about when I speak of the mountain of gold. But you, my students, yes, you know what I'm talking about. You are the scholars of tomorrow. Yes, I pray for that with all my heart. Yes. Power will also be used not only to punish the oppressor in that region of the world, punish the wicked, but also to reward those who are righteous and who live lives of faith and treat them nicely. So watch the region of the Black Sea and wait to see when power is emerging on the foundations of faith and power is used now to resist the oppressor. Power is now used to block the oppressor. He cannot touch Venezuela. He, could, he, went, and he, he went and he brought regime change all over South America and Central America, left, right, and center for the last 200 years. But he can't do it in Venezuela. Why? Two, 20, 20 years or more now they're trying to bring regime change in Venezuela from Hugo Chavez to Maduro. You can't do it. No, you can't because you're blocked. So power will be used now to check the oppressor 
When you see that power emerging in the region of the Black Sea, you know that the second current is now with us. That power will also be used to protect those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct. Yes, our brothers and sisters, the Christians who live in Syria, the Christians who have lived in that part of the world for centuries and centuries and centuries, they're not like the Christians who lived in Turkey and who have now been butchered and slaughtered and thrown out of Turkey. No, no, the Christians of Syria have been protected and have lived harmoniously with Muslims. And now comes ISIS to try to slaughter them. That's what. If ISIS had not been blocked, the Christians of Syria would have suffered the same way like the, Christian, the Armenian Christians in Turkey. Genocide. Genocide. Genocide for the third time. It's not that I'm opposed to the Turkish people. It's not that I hate Turkey. Because there are Turkish people who are going to be in that army which will liberate Constantinople. These are my brothers. And they will be happy to return Hagia Sophia to their Orthodox Christian world. I'm talking about the other Turks who say, never, never, never will we return Hagia Sophia to the Christian. When we'll fight you and we'll kill you. You're not our brothers. We'll fight you and we'll kill you in order for Constantinople to be conquered because Nabi Muhammad he prophesied it. That conquest has not been coming, has not taken place. You can continue to live in your dreamland if you want. But we know, we have knowledge. And so if ISIS had succeeded, the Christians would have been slaughtered. They have faith, they are people of faith. They're people of righteous conduct. They've lived with us in Syria for ages and ages and ages harmoniously. And yet now, when the modern age came and the, the oppressor tries to bring us into war with each other, they hate with each other. That's what modern civilization did. ISIS came to slaughter them. And guess what the second current did? It blocked. It blocked them. The wicked taking their weapons and the money, the U.S. dollars from Santa Claus, to wage a bogus jihad. Get lost. I'll never pray on your grave if you died in that bogus jihad. Get lost. So you'll, you'll see the second current coming when you see power being used in that way from the region of the Black Sea. But then there is a second journey. And now listen. You recognize the second current. Because when power emerges in the region of the Black Sea, and that power is used to check the oppressor, and to punish him, and that power rests on the foundations of faith, that power will not look westwards. That power will look eastwards. I hope you're listening to me in Moscow. That power would look in the direction of the true rising of the sun, which is in the east. My Lord causes the sun to rise from the east. Why don't you cause it to rise from the west? So there's a false sunrise in the west and there's a true sunrise in the east. We know that false sunrise where a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. That's an unnatural way of life where women marry each other. That's an unnatural way of life. But here in the true sunrise, there's a natural way of life. لَا لَمْ نَجَعَلْ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهَا سِتْرَةً لَمْ نَجَعَلْ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهَا سِتْرَةً That there are people for whom we had offered nothing other than what is natural. And these are people who live the natural way of life. But Gog and Magog tried to get them to live with hatred for each other. That is why Armenia is lo located between Turkey and the Caspian Sea. That is the misfortune of Armenia. Because you are located between Turkey and the Black Sea, that's why you had to suffer. Oh, sorry, not the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea. Because that part of the world where the Caspian Sea is located, they want that world to become a copycat of theirs. That's right. 
Whereas Allah wants that part of the world to live the natural way of life. And so because Armenia stands between them, Armenia is constantly being subjected to oppression and genocide. That's right, I'm using the correct word, genocide in Armenia. I have people in Armenia writing to me now. I have people coming to visit me from Armenia. Yes. And so we have to bring back reconciliation, friendship and alliance between Christians and Muslims in Azerbaijan and Armenia. That's what I'm working for, not just in the Balkans. Because when Zulkarnain travels in the direction of the rising of the sun, he must find a people living the natural way of life and therefore in a state of harmony with each other. And so tomorrow, 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 I'm telling you if you're in Armenia, tomorrow you, the Christians of Armenia, you're going to be closest in love and affection to us Muslims. I'm telling you that for today, as in the Balkans. The Armenian Christians who have suffered the most are tomorrow becoming the closest in love and affection to Islam, true Islam, not Gog and Magog Islam. And those Armenians and those from Azerbaijan who are Muslims are going to come together in harmonious friendship and live as a family. And that is what the second Khan is going to bring about. And then comes the third Khan, sorry, the third journey. And that is the most difficult of all. That is the most difficult of all. When, Gog, when Zulkarnain travels to the Dariel Gorge, the pass between the mountains, he does so to checkmate Gog and Magog. How will he checkmate Gog and Magog the second time? How will he do it? I wrote, I wrote a book, it's over here, on the Quran, the Great War, and the West. And in that book, I went to Surah to Rahman. And in Surah to Rahman, I offered some comments on it. But uh, I don't have the time now. Uh, in order for me to go to the third journey and to, to the checking of Gog and Magog the second time, I believe I have to go to Surah to Rome. Remember Surah to Rome. And uh, in Surah to Rome, Allah speaks um, that uh, these are Christian people, the Byzantine Empire. غُلِبَتِ الرُّومِ فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْنِ وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ فِي بِدْعِ سِنِينَ And then Allah goes on to say مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدُ وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That Rome was defeated in a land close by but in a few years they'll be victorious and uh, in the same way that they were victorious the first time they'll be victorious the second time so we I believe that the second victory of Rome mentioned in Surah to Rome is located with Zulkarnain and the third journey which will block Gog and Magog. And then there is Surah to, um, Surah to Ali Imran and I'm now hurrying because time is going to be up soon. Where when Nabi Isa Islam was being crucified he did not know what was going to happen when Allah spoke to him in that conversation in the Quran. Ya Isa, inni mutawafika wa rafiuka ilayya wa mutahiruka min al-lazina kafaru wa ja'ilu al-lazina tabawuka fawka al-lazina kafaru ila yawm al-qiyama. That, oh Jesus, I'm going to take your soul and I'm going to raise you unto myself. Take your soul and then return the soul, that is, and raise you unto myself and cleanse you of what they have said against you. And I'm going to cause those who follow you to be raised to a position of dominance over those who rejected you. And uh, when that happens, they will remain in that position until the end of the world. I think this also is connected with that journey of Zulkarnain to block Gog and Magog one more time. And then there is a surah to Saf, I may be wrong. Uh, فَآمَنَتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَكَفَرَتْ طَائِفَةٌ 
So part of Banu Israel reject, accepted the Messiah and part rejected him. فَأَيَّدْنَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَىٰ عَدُوِّهِمْ فَأَصْبَحُوا ظَاهِرِينَ so we assisted those who accepted him against their enemies and they remain, they emerged dominant, they prevailed over them. All of these verses of the Quran have been, have to be brought together in a harmonious whole. We don't have the time to do that today, but what we have done today is to whet your appetite, oh yes, for the critical study of this subject. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may rescue if you want to become that scholarship of tomorrow, which will be the second shower, thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.